can you understand why, as a journalist, particularly at NPR, where fairness and objectivity seem to be so emphasized, why does everyone who, I guess, why are you such a target for people who you would think would embrace fairness and objectivity? Who would that be? Well, that's true. <laughs> but why, why, why is Big Bird such an enemy? It's not Big Bird. Big Bird is the savior. Year after year, cycle after cycle, every administration has bumped into, uh, has collided with NPR and complained about it, Republican and Democratic. But it's only Republicans that want to zero out the budget. And the only thing that beats them back every time is Big Bird. He is invincible. He has uh, a lightsaber, and he just slices right through the opposition. Uh, why public radio and public television is such a target is public radio is increasing in influence, A, but most important is B, 10%. 10% of public radio's money comes from the government. If that money weren't there, if they didn't have the uh, taxpayer banner to wave, they, they wouldn't have a case to make. We would just be anybody else that they dislike. I mean, it isn't as if the New York Times hasn't been singled out over and over again as well. I mean, it's, it has been 30 years of uh, creation of this notion that mainstream media reports in a liberally biased way. And there were a lot of people who felt ill-served by mainstream media. In fact, there was one completely <coughs> uh, dead form of media that was sing singly handed, resurrected by Rush Limbaugh, that is AM radio, because it was a place where people who felt ill-served or unserved by mainstream media could go and be angry. And, uh, and that exact formula was applied to Fox News. Although Fox News did, uh, I watched Fox News almost exclusively on election oh, night. Oh, who didn't? But, yeah. <laughs> but I don't mean after it looked like, a, you know, for, for gloating purposes. Mm -hmm. I meant I just wanted to see how they, how they covered it. And uh, Shep Smith is, is a very fair guy. Yes. And uh, their coverage, the, the guests, the commentators they had to talk about the election and the election results were uh, more diverse than were on MSNBC by far. And, uh, and of course, you had the, uh, the great moment when Karl Rove it, you know, produced that primal scream. And you saw Fox trying very hard to address this in as clear and open and uninflected a way as they could. So I, I understand that Roger Ailes, the head of Fox News, said to um, the staff before the election. Now look, if it looks like Obama is winning, don't act like somebody ran over your dog. <laughs> uh, some did, uh, but mostly they didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, that brings me to my next question, which is we live in an age now where it is possible to quite literally be hermetically sealed off from any opinion that doesn't agree with your own. Uh, Fox viewers, as you said, take the Kool-Aid from Roger Ailes. And by the same token, MSNBC viewers live in an age of New Deal idealism. Uh, I'm wondering, many people have pointed out that this really isn't that different than the way the press used to behave 150 years ago when everything was partisan in terms of rep reporting. I'm just wondering, we live in an age of 24-7 cable networks. Is it now impossible? for one point of view to ever really listen to another point of view. It's entirely possible. And you're, of course, right about that history. You know, you, I've spent a, a big chunk of my book uh, recounting uh, the history of journalism from the invention of the written word to the year 2042. Gets a little sci-fi at the end. And, uh, <laughs> and what I find is, over and over again, that period, that golden period that so many people refer to, uh, the, is, basically is the golden age of consensus media. And it happened because 
contrary to a centuries-long historic trend of media getting cheaper, 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 there was the creation of a medium that was way more expensive, which was television, which required assembling enormous audiences. And how do you do that? You have to create television that appeals to a broad middle and marginalizes outsiders. So if you want to watch television, you will have to find yourself identifying with that great middle. No matter that your life has nothing to do with the life that Beaver Cleaver led. That's who's on television. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people that were otherwise not represented, people of all different colors, people with accents, immigrants, vowels at the end of their names, uh, who never saw themselves on television, who you know were forced, more or less, if they wanted to be entertained by the great medium of the day, to subscribe to this great middle. Likewise, at the time that television was being created and television newscasts were being created, the government was in the midst of a political moment that was fraught existentially. It was the Cold War. The collision of the Cold War and expensive technology created the culture of the style of, I should say, objectivity, mm. which basically was leaving stuff out and creating a big central point of view. And that made everybody happy, especially the government that was licensing television and regulating it. So mostly it's been a big mess. To get to your question about can we ever find voices in, with whom we, who reflect views with which we don't agree? Of course we can, if we want to. There was a study that was done uh, at Harvard that found that people who were incredibly well informed before the internet were even more informed after the internet. And people who were uninterested in news before the internet were now even less informed after the internet. Which just shows what I've always believed and which I think all the evidence bears out the new technology just makes me more of what, we were what I was going to be, what you were going to be, what all of us were going to be anyway. So if you're naturally curious and you're willing to venture out of your comfort zone, in the environment is so rich. If you want to be hermetically sealed, that option is available to you. Too.